In the chaotic early hours of October 7, Israeli forces scrambled to engage Hamas fighters. <laughs> Apache helicopter gunships fired onto cars driving towards Gaza, aware that some of them were carrying captives. Without guidance, some pilots said they joined local WhatsApp groups to help pick targets. The idea that pilots have to get information from WhatsApp groups is truly remarkable. It's a sign of the initiative that people are looking for any way that they can get the information. This is an outrage. I mean, what kind of a way is that to fight a modern war? At least 70 vehicles were hit by attack helicopters. To me, it's inexcusable for a, a helicopter or any weapon system to be engaging any target if you don't know what that target is. Now, my concern is, with this footage, we cannot tell whether they're Hamas gunmen or civilians, or possibly hostages. And I don't believe the helicopter pilot or the machine gun operator would be able to tell either. These big rounds have a certain area effect and obviously come at a certain rate that if you shoot at a group of people, you're most likely going to kill everyone. You are knowingly putting your own civilians at risk. The I unit compiled a detailed list of those killed on October 7. It found that 27 captives died somewhere between their homes and the Gaza fence. The circumstances of those deaths have not been explained. Twelve more civilian deaths took place in Berry Kibbutz after an attack by police and army forces on a house there containing captives. Israel's Channel 12 spoke to survivors. The investigative unit asked the Israeli army for comment on its actions on October 7. They did not reply. Peter Charlie, Al Jazeera. Let's now speak to Justin Schlossberg. He's the co-founder of the Institute for Journalism and Social Change, joining us from London. Welcome to Al Jazeera. Let me just get your initial reaction and your initial thoughts over this uh, investigative piece. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's an important piece for, cert for certain. And there has been, obviously, rumours uh, flying around for a while that uh, a number of the casualties on October the 7th did come from uh, so-called friendly fire. Um, it's important to say, uh, it goes without saying, but still important to say that, um, you know, what did take place on October 7th was uh, horrific atrocities and war crimes uh, very likely committed by Hamas fighters. Uh, it's important to say that obviously in the fog of war uh, and in the chaos and the violence that ensued, uh, very grave mistakes were made uh, by the IDF in their defensive response in their legitimate defensive response. But it's also important to say that absolutely nothing justifies the indiscriminate killing of civilians, including over 12,000 children on every day since October the 7th, 154 days. Uh, you know, what amounts to, according to the ICJ, a possible genocide, including, according to many experts, an actual genocide, deliberate starvation of a, a populace is utterly unjustifiable and these stories do need to come out because they show exactly what is has gone so badly wrong with the israeli response to this attack right i mean in the days that followed october 7th we saw that hamas was blamed for the killing of approximately or more than a thousand israelis and and that really was the narrative that was pushed out by israel and its allies as well as some in the media frankly but here in this investigative piece, what you have now is video evidence, you have uh, eyewitness testimony, and you also have pilots who say that they joined local WhatsApp groups to help pick targets as they themselves had no guidance from anyone. I mean, this really flies in the face of that propaganda that was pushed out uh, shortly after October 7th, doesn't it? 
Well, well we, I think we need to be careful here because I think, you know, what, what is very clear, uh, it seems to me, notwithstanding the important findings of this investigation, the vast majority, or at least a very significant majority, of the casualties on October the 7th were, as I said, the result of atrocities and war crimes committed by Hamas fighters. But what's also clear is that partly probably in, in the response to the trauma and the fog of war, stories emerged from October the 7th that clearly weren't true and that were clearly exploited by the, from as far as I'm concerned, the gang of murderous thugs uh, that occupy the Israeli government, as well as some of their far-right supporters and commentators in the media, to create a narrative in an attempt to justify what amounts, in my view, to a genocidal war on Gaza. And I think it's really, really important to look at how these stories, not so much emerged, but how they were amplified by mainstream media across the board um, and how little care was taken by so many journalists to really uh, ascertain the, the degree to which these stories were true. I mean, obviously, including here the stories uh, you know, now thoroughly debunked of uh, the deliberate uh, massacre of babies. And I think that that is an important, uh, it, it's an important thing to learn from a media perspective, because really, in when the first casualty of war is true, the thing that populations rely on, on all sides of the war, is journalists to try as far as possible and cut through that fog. And if they can't cut through that fog, at least be honest about what we don't know. And too many journalists took things that were coming out, coming from the Israeli government, from right-wing Israeli commentators, as fact and at face value when they should never have been. And just one more for you. I mean, what do you make of the... Al Jazeera has approached the, the army for comment. There's been no reply yet. What do you make of, of their silence and uh, sort of um, uh, domestically within Israel? This will matter to the Israeli public? Will there be pressure internally to investigate this? I, I mean, I think there will be. I think there is a growing uh, awareness uh, in, in, in Israel now that not only is this war being um, fought on, on, on false pretenses in the sense that uh, there's clearly no way in which what the government says it aims to achieve from the war that it could ever possibly achieve for, for the war. Ultimately, any sense of security or long-term peace for the Israeli people. And I think that that in itself is leading to very serious questions that are starting to get uh, attention, including in the mainstream media, about how Israel's prosecuting this war and how they've been prosecuting it from day one, which includes, as I said, the, the very grave mistakes and probably, uh, in some cases, deliberate misjudgments on the part of um, the IDF, on the part of the Israeli government. Uh, it includes also the uh, serious jeopardy that I think the Israeli government's policy has put uh, hostages in, Israeli hostages in, uh, and is continuing to do so. And I think that that is starting to become a major talking point uh, within Israel. And I think it's incredibly important that it's amplified as much as possible. All right, we'll leave it there. Thank you, Justin Schlossberg. Thanks for speaking to us from London.